By far, number one question that people ask me online is, how do I start learning machine learning? So this is what I want to do today, okay? I'm going to show you some books. I'm going to show you some classes that you can start taking. This is, let's call it the path that I recommend people to follow if they want to start learning, getting into the industry. Here is a caveat though, every person is different. So not all of us learn the same way. Some people prefer reading books. Some people prefer just watching YouTube tutorials. Some people prefer going to school. You have to pick your own path. What I'm going to share with you right now is for a person that obviously cannot just go to college because that would be a great, a great option. But let's say you want to start learning from home. You want to just start using free resources. Most of the stuff that I'm gonna share with you today is free. Some of it is not, so you're gonna to have to make the determination of what exactly you want. From scratch, you don't have anything else. Where do you start? Well, you're gonna start by learning Python. If you already know how to write Python, you're golden. If you don't, start right there. Forget about machine learning for a second, forget about math, forget about all of the other stuff, focused on learning how to write software. And Python, won the AI race. Meaning if you really want to work on AI, there is no other language that's gonna give you what Python gives you. Every single scientific research paper is written on Python. Libraries are all Python. All of the code that we share, we communicate using Python. There might be some weird department that does something different. It's not a thing. Learn Python. How do you learn Python? I have a couple of recommendations. By the way, there are a bunch of books. I'm not gonna show them uh, here. Just find any Python books, a bunch of them that are really cool. Online, if you go to Udacity, they have an intermediate Python program, which I think is pretty good. This assumes that you know a little bit of Python already, but again, you can get that little bit by just watching YouTube videos. There are a bunch of tutorials that start from scratch, and then you can take this class, and I think that's gonna be enough for you. Just so I'm clear, this is not a one month learning Python type of thing. I started learning Python in 2000, I think 13, 14, it's been 10 years now. I did that after other 20 years coding. So after coding for 20 years and writing software in a bunch of different languages, that's when I started learning Python. And it's been 10 years and I'm pretty sure I don't know anything about Python yet. Right, I know just a small percentage. So don't think of Python as sort of like a checkbox. And when you're done with it, now you can move on with your life. It's not gonna be like that, but you need a foundation. You need to start somewhere. So start with Python and then start incorporating the other topics that we're gonna be discussing here. Okay, so that's where I will start. Now, after you feel comfortable writing Python code and you are ready to start learning uh, getting into the machine learning field, I would recommend you find the Kaggle tutorials, okay? So I have here in this page, the list of tutorials that Kaggle publishes. These are fantastic for a couple of reasons. So number one, they're very simple. So they're very easy to pick up. And number two, they're very short. Like if I go to the intro to machine learning tutorial, which is the one that I want you to, to go through, uh, they say it's gonna take you about three hours to complete. These tutorials obviously assume that you already know Python or that you're comfortable with Python, and they are going to introduce you very, very gently to the world of machine learning. Three hours, that's it. That's all it takes for you to get your feet wet. These tutorials are not gonna make you an expert. These tutorials are not gonna give you a job tomorrow when you apply, of course not. But it's a great introduction to the field and you're gonna start building things. I think the intro to machine learning is gonna teach you how to use decision trees, which is awesome, right? It's just a tool that we use every single day and it's awesome because you're gonna learn it just by going through this tutorial. Very, very simple. There are more tutorials that are very helpful here in the Kaggle website. After the intro to machine learning, they have an intermediate machine learning and that's great. That's gonna be another four hours. 
not a huge investment of time, okay? So you can do this. These two are kind of like the appetizer here, okay? You're gonna start with this. This is slow, this is beginner mode. You're gonna crank it a little bit more by searching for the Google Machine Learning Crash Course. And here is the webpage. This is a free class, a free course. It's 25 lessons, 15 hours, so it's longer. That again, you can take, it was created by Google. I think I've been told that Google created this for their own team internally. So to just level up the entire team. So you can go through this class. It's also very gentle. You should not expect too much math. You should not expect this to be crazy difficult. And it's a great sort of like intermediate step after you're done with the Kaggle tutorials, okay? When you're done with this and you are ready for a challenge, the advanced step is you're gonna look for the machine learning specialization that is in Coursera. This one is not gonna be free. I think you have to pay like a monthly subscription to Coursera, which I think is $49. And then you can take the specialization. This here, they say you should take two months and uh, at 10 hours a week. So if you dedicate 10 hours a week, it's gonna take you eight weeks to go through, through the whole program. This one is more advanced. Here, you are going to be dealing with more math and you're gonna get a little bit more formal in the stuff that you're learning here. This is a fantastic specialization, by the way. They say here that almost half a million people is enrolled already <laughs> for, for this. And the previous version, which was the one that I took uh, back in the day, it was extremely popular. Millions of people went through that uh, version. It was a, a course right now, it's a specialization. So it, it takes a little bit longer, it's a little bit more formal. And they also use Python now before uh, they used Octave, which is a different language. These are the three sort of like from beginner start here, a little bit more intermediate, a little bit more advanced courses that you have to go through. But that is just the tip of the iceberg, okay? So here is what's been happening lately. Top universities in the world, the top ones here in the United States have been publishing live their deep learning and machine learning classes. If you know what you're looking for, you are going to find the classes that the top brilliant people in this country created for students for free on YouTube. So I'm just gonna give you a couple of them here. There are a bunch more. I will probably write down a list at some point and post it so you can have that list. But here is the MIT 6.S191 Introduction to Deep Learning. So this is a class that you can take and it's gonna be free online. There is also the deep learning. Uh, this is from New York University, I think. Yes, NYU. This is their version of 2021. And you can see here every week with all of the classes, um, all of the content is here. I think all of the YouTube, uh, the videos are on YouTube. There is another one here. It's keeping, you know, popping messages on my face. The machine learning Cornell certificate program. Like this is the class, but I think one of the years was published on YouTube as well. So again, there are a bunch of classes. Harvard University has some classes as well. All of these universities have been publishing these programs, which are gonna take you even further from the path that I already shared with you. That is with respect to classes and courses and whatnot. So what about books? Okay, so I have here my three favorite books. As you can see, I don't know if you can tell, but I really, really like books. I read a ton of books, technical books. And I have three here. I have four books, but I'm gonna explain what the fourth one is. I have three books here, which are my favorite books if you are studying or for you to get started, okay? So in no particular order, these three books, uh, the first one that I have here, it's Hands-On Machine Learning with Scikit-Learn, Keras, and TensorFlow. This is Aurelien Geron. Um, this is an amazing book, especially when you're studying. It is very comprehensive. By the way, I have the second edition. I think there is a third edition already, but I, I only have the second edition. My book is all marked up and there is a bunch of uh, 
hand here. The edition is beautiful. I know that sounds a little bit superficial, but I really appreciate when a book has colors and nice pages and I really really like that but what's really cool about this book again is that it, it starts from the beginning and it covers a lot of ground with some of the most important most popular tools that exist right now here you're gonna go from from decision trees which is a very simple technique all the way to deep learning and, and CNNs, like convolution neural networks and RNNs, recurrent neural networks, you're gonna cover a ton of ground. So this will be the first one. Uh, if you can afford it, it will be a great book. I think I have a link in the description below. You're gonna find it there. All right, so the second book is this one here, and I have the second edition, is Deep Learning with Python, okay? And this one is from Francois Cholet. Francois is the creator of Keras. I have the second edition of the book. Francois is working on a third edition. It's not ready yet. Apparently, based on what he said, it's going to be, it's gonna contain a ton more content. What I really like about this book, again, is that it sort of like gives you the full idea of, of a machine learning project or a deep learning project, right? From data collection to cleaning the data. So it, it tries to cover the full arc. This is one of the recommendations that I give people who attend my class. In my class, I cover also the full arc. And this is, this is one of the, the top recommendations about Keras. Keras is, let's think about it like a front-end library to a backend that does all of the work. So like, for example, you have TensorFlow, you have PyTorch. Those two libraries are, I'm gonna call them backends. They are gonna do the heavy lifting of processing, let's say you, when you create a neural network of doing all of the training and running the algorithm, etc. But what the developer is gonna be using, the developer does not have to use those libraries directly because they're more verbose and it's a little bit harder to just get something done. So we have these front-end libraries. I'm gonna call them front-ends here. And Keras is one of them. Lightning is another one in the case of PyTorch. And what you do with Keras, what's really cool about Keras is that it's completely agnostic of the backend. So if you learn Keras, you can swap the backend by changing a single line, just a single configuration setting you change. And now you can use Keras with TensorFlow Keras with Jax, Keras with PyTorch. And by using a common front end, you can take advantage, depending on your problem, of all of the available backends right now, which is amazing because it's kind of like for free. It's like a, a you know an optimization that you can get. You can optimize your code sort of like for free. Some problems are better for a Torch backend. Some problems are better for a Jax backend. You don't have to pick now. You use Keras, you get access to all of those. All right, so that will be the second recommendation. The third recommendation is this one here. So it's machine learning with PyTorch and scikit-learn. You might have seen scikit-learn repeated <laughs> over and over again. It's a very popular library that you are gonna have to learn. So this one here is kind of the equivalent of this, but while this is Keras, and, and TensorFlow, this one here is PyTorch, okay? This is Sebastian Raska, great person to follow if you see him online, just amazing follow. And this book is not only very comprehensive as well, it's also very, very well written. So that will be my third recommendation. And here you have like a really good package. If you go and read these three books, uh, you're not gonna be missing much, <laughs> honestly. I have a fourth book here, and I'm gonna show it to you before I go to my final sort of like thoughts or final advice. So a lot of people right now, uh, we're, we just moved from talking about machine learning and started talking about AI. And now everyone wants to do AI. And while machine learning is part of the AI, is under the AI umbrella, the artificial intelligence umbrella, what people really mean when they talk about AI nowadays is, is more, I want to use large language models and I want to build AI applications. And these three books are not for that, okay? So what you're looking uh, for is how do I use the OpenAI API on my application to build, I don't know, to connect with a large language model, maybe build a, a retrieval augmented generation application. Well, these 
three books are not for that, okay? So these three books are machine learning, they are just to build the algorithms, to train models, et cetera, et cetera. What you need for the other portion of this AI world, the, the LLM, connect to LLM and build applications, uh, what you need to do is something like Langchain, for example, which is a very popular library that will allow you to sort of like uh, glue together different components to run workflows that include large language models. This is a book that I read uh, that I really, really like. It's Generative AI with Langchain. And this book will teach you that. And I'm sorry, this is sort of like a sidetrack here because I was supposed to talk about machine learning, but I know some people are just here because of this. So this will be a great addition to your reading list if you wanted to, or you can also just get any online content. You know, YouTube is full of videos about generative AI. The last thing that I'll mention is when you're done with all of this, obviously, and that probably will take years. If you're looking for something a little bit more advanced, a little bit more practical, I teach a class. It's a machine learning engineering class. So that class, even though I try to focus on the full arc of a machine learning system, starting from scratch, it's more advanced. It's for people with a little bit of experience already on the field. Uh, maybe there are data scientists that, are, that don't know exactly how to deploy and monitor and evaluate their models. And that's what my class comes in. It's a live class. So we do this live. We do classes just like this, except you can ask me questions right there. So anyway, the link is going to be below in the description. Here is ml.school. And three more notes that I have here that I wanted to share. I don't want to forget about this. So first, the way you learn machine learning is by solving problems. It's the same way that you learn how to code. You need to work on problems. If you have to ask what problem should I be working on, I'm going to say you have not paid enough attention yet, or you are not at a point where you should be asking that question. It's going to become extremely obvious what problems you should be working on as soon as you start getting into the material. The number of problems will be infinite. One of the intro tutorials that I, I shared with you for in, in Kaggle, the intro to machine learning, for example, is going to point at a very popular problem. It's called the Titanic data set. And the Titanic data set, your goal is to predict whether a person is going to survive the Titanic or not. But that is just one example of the type of problems they're going to find out there. There are many, many, many problems for you to work on. Now, some of those problems are not going to be career defining problems. Like I'm not telling you solve one of those problems and it has to be unique and you need to be the only one working on that problem. I'm actually telling you the opposite. And that's my second piece of advice. Work on problems that another 10,000 people have worked before. That's how you start learning. Don't try to just build something that's unique because when you get stuck, nobody's going to be there to help you. Start slow. Start by solving the Titanic problem. The MNIST data set built a model for that. The house prediction data set. Start with things that another 10,000 people have done before you. You get stuck, you will get immediate help. You will also have the ability to see 10 different answers for your problem. Not just what somebody or the way that somebody solved it, but the way another 10 people solved it. And that will teach you a lot. So that one, that's my second piece of advice. My third piece of advice is share what you learn. This is incredibly underrated. When you are learning, you're keeping all of that stuff inside. But if you try to explain other people, if you try to take what you just learned and convince another person that you know about that, you will find that that is one of the exercises that will force you the most to keep learning. Because as soon as you try to explain that, you're going to realize that you don't know half of what you thought that you knew. So you're going to have to go back because you cannot explain unless you understand. So find an outlet for you to share what you know. The outlet that I, I picked a long time ago was Twitter. Now it's YouTube, right? Or LinkedIn or a newsletter or a blog. So whatever it is, share with the world what you're learning and you will see how you're going to multiply the learnings. Final note here is follow your curiosity. So machine learning is a huge field. There are people working on computer vision. There are people working on, on natural language processing. There are people working on time series analysis. Follow 
what makes you feel happy. And that is the way you're going to make progress. Don't try to learn everything. The way I will recommend is using a little bit of the exploration, exploitation dilemma. Start by exploring a lot. When you're studying, just keep your eyes open. Try to do a little bit of everything. And as you feel compelled, as something calls your name, start diving deeper into that area. You're most likely going to become a specialist on a specific area instead of trying to do everything at the same time. So start wide open eyes and then focus as you feel that something is more interesting to you. Be patient. This is a marathon. It's not a sprint. This is for the rest of your life. So hopefully uh, this helps. If you have any questions, just leave them below. I'm going to try to answer as much as as many as I can. And I'll see you in the next one.